When it comes to teaching children in school, there are a few different methods and styles to choose from. One that many people may not have heard of is called the Reggio Emilia approach. This style is quite different from the other forms of traditional teaching in several ways. Curriculum is emergent rather than fixed pre-planned. So children have a lot of say in what they want to learn rather than teacher decide for their curriculum. This approach also calls for young children to be more hands-on in what they are doing. It's about learning from them. It's about viewing the child as competent and full of potential so that when they come here, we don't feel like, okay, there's all this knowledge that we need to teach them. We're like, okay, what do they know and what can we give them? What materials can we give them to make them build upon that knowledge? Well, I think the project approach fosters critical thinking. It fosters exploration. Its limits are boundless. They're not held to a time constraint. The children pretty much establish when it ends, when, when interest begins to wane is when the project ends. In order to fully understand this teaching approach, we must first learn about where it came from. To do that, we have to travel more than 4,000 miles from South Bend to the small village of Reggio Emilia, Italy, shortly after the end of World War II. Well, it was a community of parents, but it was um, fostered by Larisse Malaguti, who uh, was a teacher dry, um, riding his bike through a village and he saw some people building a site and they said it was a center and so he stepped in to help and he became really the head of Reggio Emilia's um, growth over the years. And it's through Malaguzzi's thought process that allows this teaching approach to grow. According to Malaguzzi, the children are very strong, very powerful, and also their minds are like a plasticity. And then they, ha they can be stretched, they have a great potential to, to learn if you guide them in the right way. The Reggio Emilia approach may have gotten to start in Reggio Emilia, Italy, but then how did it make its way to classrooms like this one in South Bend, Indiana? Almost 20 years ago, uh, the 100 Languages exhibit came to South Bend. It was at the Center for History. And so at that time, we had uh, lots of teachers, teachers in different grades and different disciplines that went to go see the exhibit that got very inspired by it and came back and said, oh my goodness, you, you, know, you have to check this out. And since then, the Stanley Clark School has been using the Reggio Emilia approach to teach young students. But if the students are the ones expressing what they want to learn, what role do the teachers play? The children see me as a learner as well, and so we learn about it together and we explore together, and it's been a lot of fun. You never know what each day is going to bring. And these teachers are always willing to work right alongside those they're teaching. We work right along with the child, side by side with the kid. You'll often see us on the floor, sitting at the tables with the student, um, you know, at the computer researching something with the student. It's not your typical, I'm going to stand in front of the class and teach and direct what we're going to do. But without a fixed lesson plan, how do teachers know what they should have ready to go to help mold these young minds? I don't really know what we're going to do tomorrow or the next day, but I know where their interest might take us. So I, as a teacher, I have to do a lot of um, documenting what happened that day and, and I have to think, okay, what can I bring to the table tomorrow that might enhance that? Teachers also have to find a way to make sure students want to learn what they're being taught. In the Reggio approach, if you're, if you're following the student's lead and you're listening to their conversations and you're talking to them and they're telling you kind of things that they're interested in or areas that they might want to study, then they're excited about it. Parents are considered a child's first teacher and school teachers are their second. But the Reggio Emilia approach takes the concept of teachers a step further. Well, the learning environment I would describe as a um, more natural learning environment, so there's lots of natural elements, and they use a lot of materials that you might not find in a traditional classroom. A changing and evolving learning environment is considered to be an essential part of a young child's education. Teachers uh, view environment as a third teacher because they design the environment that is appropriate for children. So we put a great deal of time and energy and care into the design and setup of our environment. And the way we begin at the beginning of the year is very open-ended so that as we get to know the kids and as they claim the space as their own, 
then it really becomes you know, personalized and individualized to them. Of course, with a teaching approach that is still considered new, how is the rate of success measured? Being part of a larger school, we've had the luxury of seeing how it, these kids do when they move into lower school and into middle school. And we even have kids now that are high school level that are all excelling. And certainly part of that is because of the really strong foundation that they get here at the very beginning. The Reggio Emilia approach may seem different and can often be hard to pin down, but there are those who feel this style of teaching could have limitless potential. This allows children to learn by being curious and being creative and being critical thinkers, and those are all so important as lifelong skills.